When I first met him, it was at a morning's prayer. Then I asked him, could I come back for a noon? Do y'all have a noon prayer? And they said, yes, we have a noon prayer. So I went back for the noon. Then I went back for the evening. And I kept going back until I met them all and got acquainted with them all. So what have you done for the sisters over a period of time? Well, I mostly take their spirituality out in the world. And then I, uh, I always go and do talks for them. They usually want to take me like uh, Mendota School. I go over there and I tell my story. And then uh, to the ninth, the ninth, 10th and 11th grade, I had met this guy and I got married. And uh, I moved to Kansas City. And then from Kansas City, we moved back here. And, and long and behold, I didn't know that the guy was out on parole for, for murder. He had shot put a pillow over this woman's head and shot her in the head. And her nine-year-old son was watching it. I didn't know I didn't know all that. Oldest daughter, and she was 12 years old, and she got pregnant. And then her father took her from me and took her back to Nebraska, and she had to have an abortion. And I was telling them about the red flags about guys, how you could tell the red flags if they get close to your daughters, wanting to buy your daughters a lot of different things, especially things that you don't want them to have. I never wanted my kids to have bikes. He bought every last one of my girls' bikes. Uh, whatever they wanted, he bought. I started using cocaine when, he, when I moved back here, when I came back home, after they took my oldest child, that's when I started using the cocaine in 1986. What happened to you and the drug? What happened to you? What happened I got stuck on the drug. Um, I was a LPN. I was working at Westwood Nursing Home. And then, I, and in the morning time, I would smoke crack before I go to work. At lunchtime, I go get in my car, and I got these sun visors that you put in the windows that you can't see. And I would smoke coke in my car, doing fine until I got this letter. And then some guys came to my house, kicked my door in, and beat me up because my first husband sent them there to do that. And I said, well, before I let some uh, some guy kill me, I might. Would do it to myself. I was suicidal, so I started smoking crack again. And then when I did that, then that's when I had that second heart attack, and there was no hope for me. They said that I wasn't going to make it, and so they helicoptered me from here back to Omaha. What did the sisters do for you when you were married to Robert? I know that was a rock and roll ride. When, He's a good man, yeah. but he was using it. Well, the, when uh, when uh, I was living with Robert, I would always go to his house and I would be crying because he would be in the basement with his friends and they would OD and he would call me down there because I was a nurse and I had to do the CPR on him and bring him back with the ice and stuff, bring him back. And I went over to his sister and I cried all the time to them because I wanted to leave Robert, but then I was afraid because Robert was sickly and I didn't want God to say that I abandoned one of his shepherds. I, I got a lot of support for them. It was like, a burden was lifted off me. Every time I went over there, I went over there with a crushed heart, heavy burden. And when I went over there and they talked to me and they prayed with me, it just feel like that. When they prayed with me with God, everything just went away. And I now I got a cross and I'm almost a sister. I'm just, I can do everything they do, but only I was married. I can be buried where they're buried at and everything. So where, when, they, when they pass on, and they go out there on 42nd Street to that cemetery out there, I could be buried next to one of the sisters if I want to. That's because God let me be on this earth to see another life than the one that I live. I feel like I've been reborn again because the life that I had before, I left it behind. And I got a new life. When I came out that coma, I was a new person. And I just wanted to work for God and to do things for God. So I feel that I'm blessed because he bought me out the coma. I'm not crippled. I'm not handicapped. I do have a few problems. I got a heart problem from it. I'm a paranoid schizophrenia. I'm bipolar and I'm manic depression. But I'm on medicine. Those, those women are God's angels. God put those women over on the north side to help this fortunate poor people. And those are God's angels, and the, and I'm along with them. Well, some days you used to end up on the grass with with cuffs on, didn't you? Because they arrested the whole damn bunch of them. Yes, because of the drugs. And the sisters would come over, 
and bring uh, juice and cookies and ask the police officer, do they want juice and cookies? And then, then they told the policeman, you know, she's really a good person. She just, she just uh, with a bad person right now. And I would appreciate if you take the handcuffs off of her. And they did. Robert, it was a good guy and, and a kind heart, but he wouldn't leave the drugs alone. And I asked him, would you leave the drugs alone? And what he did was he took a deck of cards and he shuffled them and he spread them. He said, if you pull a high card, I'll stop doing drugs. But if you pull a low card, that's your answer. And I was scared to test the card. And I kept saying, okay, God, okay, God, tell me what to do, tell me what to do. So I pulled the card and there was a two of spades. And he said, well, I guess I won't quit. And that's when I packed my stuff. And I started looking for me a place. And the sisters called me. She said, Linda, you're late for, ma for noon uh, mass. I was going to do noon mass. And I was crying. I said, I can't do noon mass today. I said, I'm packing. I'm getting ready to leave Robert. She said, if you can wait till after mass is over with, we would help you. My life um, working for God and, and uh, staying in touch with the nuns and to continue doing what the nuns do by living Jesus and helping uh, disfortunate people. I hope you're around all the time, yes. you know. I do too. God bless you, girl.